Hello everybody, this is Adam here for A-Strings and welcome to another conversation. This time with guitar builder and our friend at A-Strings, Mr. Andrew Guyton. Welcome, sir. Thank you. And joining us as well is the guitar virtuoso in his own right. And I can say that because we've just been demoing stuff <laughs> and my face is still <laughs> melted. Uh, Mr. Mark Chapman. <laughs> Thank you very much for being here, sir. Pleasure. Um, right, the reason that we're here today is we are launching at A-Strings your transporter range. Mm. So we're going to first off talk about the transporters and their whole history and how they are, what they are yeah, today. Okay. Yeah, right. So first off is where did this idea come from? The idea originally came from a, a customer. Okay. Um, he designed this travel version of Brian May's Red Special. Um, sent it to me and then for one reason or another it, it didn't get made but it was always at the back of my mind about this guitar and it was just such a great design that we I so I got together with the customer we did a limited run of these guitars um, but it was just one of those things as soon as you saw it, I thought, it it's got to be built you know so we, we started building those but there was always that in the back of my mind, I wish it had this, I wish it had that. It, it's it's a very sort of niche thing, you know, you've got the Brian May pickups, the Brian May sound, of course, yeah. the scale, the size of the neck. Um, but So I, I decided to you know, slim down the neck, extend the scale, put different pickups on, and simplify it. It's, it was, it's a very, very complicated, the RS transport is very, very complicated. That's right. And we've got the RS. Yeah, the, 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 RS the original prototype us. here, yeah. So we'll uh, we'll get some some lovely pictures of that and uh, yeah. for you. So interestingly, the the red special transporter is the first one that I saw and tried. A, That's a right. Customer of yours and yeah. a friend of Andrew's brought it in, and we managed. We were lucky enough to have a play. Um. So this so the customer that originally came to you was this. Did he have a purpose for this build on this size? And it was something he could travel with. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, he's he's big on the Brian May sound. He's got one of my um, RS replicas, Red Special replicas. Um, so he wanted something similar that he could travel with. I think he was backwards and forwards to the states and Hong Kong. Oh, okay. Um, so that's that's where it originally came. Oh, from. amazing! Yeah, but I find myself playing it all the time. But it was just that I wish it was slightly different. Yeah. You know. So. Um, so in fact, that leads us straight on to sort of your design choices for your transporters mm, mm. then because obviously the red special is mm. literally the red special in this shape that, that's right yeah so so your ones then you wanted to simplify and extend the scale so how have you or what design choices have you made then for yours that that you think are sort of the improvements of then not to say that the red special because we yeah, can't no, say no, it, that it's, the red special yeah, has issues. It's just different, yeah. Like, but I'll it's be killed. yeah, a slightly longer scale, like the Gibson scale length. Cool. Yeah, of course. Uh, smaller neck. Yep. Uh, different pickup. So I, I I just liked the idea. I always liked the Tele bridge sound, uh, the Strat neck. So I tried to combine. I mean, it's always going to sound. It's never going to replace those. It's got its own sound, but it's it's sort of not in that direction. Cool. Yeah. Um, you know, with with Fender tone was like ash, you know, maple maple neck rosewood board. So it was just trying to make it perfect for me. Yeah. And that's but then it it kind of went in different directions and. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, looking at the guitars, you know, obviously there's such a such a stamp. I mean, it you know, there's no there's no way that this is anyone else's. No. But, but your, <laughs> your design. Um, and it's interesting that this has been, they've they've reached this stage through development process. Now, we've actually got one of the sort of Frankenstein the models, yeah. the pro prototype, yeah. is that, yeah. is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, which we'll get a picture of, and it's just it's just the craziest thing you've ever seen, it's brilliant. <laughs> so, it, obviously, it's been a development process. Yeah. You yeah. know, there's been things where you thought, oh, actually, that's... Yeah, that's... It, was, it was about about a year of... Changing pickups, circuits, you know, we thought, oh, let's put a you know, booster switch in there, let's um, put acoustic saddles, and so we loaded it with everything. We could. And then, as soon as you say, 
uh, for argument's sake, the, the acoustic sound, you have like piezo bridge on it. As soon as you engage that, you just play in a different way. So you're, you're sort of swiping your hand this way, and you're constantly knocking yeah. switches. So yeah. it's, you know, but we kept the same pick guard on, and it's just been through so many different yeah. switches and yeah. full of holes. But, <laughs> no, but yeah, that's the guitar brilliant. I still play. It just gets played all the time. Yeah. So, and and in, t- in terms of building the guitars, how do you find the process? Do you find it differs at all with the other styles of guitar that you build? Obviously, we're dealing with a, a literal different shape. I, I've, I've approached them in a, a slightly different way because they're, they're kind of more of a production... I mean, customs are available, but it, it, it's, you know, I've just gone through, you know, jigging everything, okay. everything I can imagine, just yeah. to make the build process, you know, easier. So it's, um, you know, a, and more consistent. Yeah. And with the production line models, we'll go into the customs yeah, in a little while, yeah. but in the production models, we have three, mm-hmm. uh, alpha, beta, and gamma. Mm-hmm. Um, is, there, is there sort of a thought process with each one, or was it just you wanted one with this style, you wanted one with this style? And you ended up with three. I think it was there was a little bit of indecision there. There was like the single pickup, um, you know, just just a bare bones, just one volume control, a coil cut, and and then there was the the, the high end one. But there was also room for another. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so the electrics of one with the simplicity of the other. So it's it just ended up being a logical, a logical series. Yeah. So it's kind of something for everybody, I, I guess. So uh, yeah, and all production lines have Damasios. Yes. Um, any reason behind the Damasio choice, or to start with, it was a string spacing. Okay. Because the the original bridge has like a fifty mil string spacing. So if you have a Tele pickup, it's got a, a much wider string spacing. Right. So we settled on yeah, rail pickups. Yeah. And I've always been a fan of Damasio's pickups anyway. So um, so just bought a few, tried them, and it, it, we tried three or four, you know, in the bridge pickup, and then tried some in the in the neck. But it it just kind of fitted, you know. But the the alpha's got a different pickup to the others, so that that's one on its own. Yeah, and obviously you said mentioned about the bridge. Mm. Now who is who is the bridge by? Or who are the bridges? They by? it was J Custom the bridge. Okay, but they are very very difficult to get hold of so we're moving over to hip shot bridges right and hip shot obviously is a very well known yeah brilliant brand yeah. Yeah. and have you had to sort of change the design at all to, to uh, the these? design i haven't but it, it's one less route you know there's no routing for oh, okay. the bridge so they're, they're a lower profile but because i like the feel of the guitar, the bridge height, we've actually put a three mil spacer under the bridge oh, okay. and the new ones just to, bring to it give to it that. T- yeah, it brings the same height and I like the feel of it so I didn't want that to change. Yeah. So, you mentioned very, very briefly about the woods that you've chosen. Yeah. Um, what, so what is, what are we using? Um, ash body. Okay. Uh, maple neck and uh, rosewood board. The rosewood board, we, we're kind of Looking for substitutes because of the uh, the sort of embargo on on the rosewood. Right. Yeah, um, ebony's not so bad. Yeah, but the I just want to get sustainable woods that were kind of plentiful. I guess you yeah. know you can get ash in any timber yard, maple or uh, sycamore to a lesser degree, but it's still you know a standard wood that's you can export it. Yeah. It's, it's good to work. It sounds great. So, um, and it, it is it's sort of quintessential hmm. guitar woods as well, yeah. isn't it? It's, yeah. you, know, um, you know that you're, you know what you're getting with, with those woods and without going into the tone woods uh, debate, mm. you know that these work, you know that mm. you know, they're good solid choices. It'll be interesting to know your rosewood outcome as well because obviously it's interesting to see all the different manufacturers, where they're going and, yeah. and what they're choosing. Yeah. But outside of the production lines, we've got... Uh, we've got several custom mm. shop. Now you obviously do one-offs for people. They can come to you and give you a brief mm. and say, mm. "I want this um, with diamonds and everything else." Yeah. And um, so, so talk about that process to, um, for you. So they come to you with a design, and, and do you say, "Well, this might not work. This will work." Yeah, occasionally. 
Yeah. Occasionally, you know, customers need sort of reining in a little bit because at the end of the day, we want a, a guitar that works. Yeah. What do you mean it doesn't shoot flames? I don't. <laughs> what do you mean it doesn't shoot flames? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I mean, with the transporter so far, it, it's, you know, we, we've built three custom, three customs, I think, but two of them have been you know, our designs. Right. So right. Uh, it, it's guitars that I like. You know that I yeah. want to build, which is yeah. which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, and and luckily they're selling. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's you know that that's uh, cracked it as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Build stuff you enjoy doing, they sell. Yeah. But, so. Um, but they're all one offs. So everything's never to be yeah. repeated. All the customers. Which is which is amazing yeah. to know yeah. that you will get one. That is, yeah, unique, that is yeah. never going to be. So what you'll see now is you'll see a couple of pictures of the one offs. Uh, you'll see the Black Pearl, and you'll see my favourite, the the Kylo. I don't know if I can say the full name. We'll probably get stamped by Disney or something. But um, it's the Kylo Ren. I don't care. <laughs> Sue me. But that's my favourite one, and um, that'll be hopefully the VW tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that'd be cool. That's yeah, really cool one as well. I'm just trying to think of ways to finance my kidney so I can buy the ah, uh, right. Kylo. Um, <laughs> so if someone wants to come to you, custom shop, uh, custom build. Um, how what is sort of turnaround time? How long can the customer expect? Uh, yeah, around six months for these ones. And obviously, that's handmade from scratch. There's only that, that, that's right. Yeah, and it also depends on what parts they need and availability. Oh, that, yeah, but that's... generally it's around that time. <laughs> Thank you.